Hello, hello! Today we will be unveiling these four different brands of watercolors to see how they fared after six months of being in the window with basically direct light all the time. In addition to that, we will be swatching these 22 colors of gouache to see how they deal with light fastness plus these 18 new watercolors that were just sent to me by one of you. If you've missed that video, I'll link that up here. We will also be doing light fast swatching of this brand new Paul Rubin set that was in my very last video. If you missed that, I will link that in the corner and the description box below. The four brands we have today are Hemi Mia, Rembrandt, Daniel Smith, and Sennelier. Can you guys guess which one is which? Some might be combined together because we might have had more colors. Okay, so this is number one. Can you guys guess which that is? Number two, number three, and number four. <laughs> so pause the video, put one, two, three, four in your guesses about which of those four brands it is. Again, we have Himi Mia, Daniel Smith, Rembrandt, and Sennelier. Some order here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to assume you've done that. I will take a minute off camera to pull off this, oh, you saw it, <laughs> to pull off this masking tape. It is really stuck. Being in the window is not its friend. Time for the big reveal. This first one is Himi Mia. So let's pull off the cardboard. This cardboard is an imperfect science, but this was before you guys suggested, why don't you just cut it in half and then see what happens. I was really hoping these paints would perform really well because I really enjoy using them, but alas, no such luck. So the top half here is the rest of the Himi Mia set, and these are the three Daniel Smith colors we received in an art subscription box. So we'll see how they fare. It looks like they fared pretty darn well, right? Some of the differences are pretty obvious already. This one, number three, is Rembrandt. So after this little test, we will just be cutting these in half and putting half in the drawer aside. So the only part in the window will be the part that needs to be exposed to the sun. So that will prevent any sun creeping in the side of the cardboard and skewing our results. This one is Sennelier. All right, these look good. So when I saw the cardboard over the Rembrandt, I thought, oh, they've faded quite a bit, but I see no fading in the Rembrandt. Is it driving you crazy that I started with number three instead of number one? Okay, okay. We'll start at number one. <laughs> Himi Mia. This yellow is very slight difference, but this one's quite a bit. Almost no difference. Quite a bit, quite a bit, quite a bit. No difference, no difference. A lot of difference. No difference, a lot of difference. <sighs> so we have some somewhat light fast paints and some not at all light fast paints. So sad. I almost never used this color. That's the one that is still pretty full in my set. In fact, I have it right over here on the counter because I'm using it. That's this color here. So you can see all the others are pretty deeply worn and that one is hardly even used. So I guess that's a good thing because it's not at all light fast. And the rest of the Himimia paints that one is a pretty big difference. No difference, no difference, no difference. No difference in all the rest, just that green up there. So there are several colors you could use for six months without dealing with any light fast issues, so that's interesting. We'll cut these in half, put them back in the window for another six months, and test them again. These are the three Daniel Smith, Rose of Ultramarine Viridian, and Mayan Blue Genuine, so they have zero change at all. So again, we'll cut this in half, put it back in the window. Yeah, Rembrandt. I thought there was a huge difference, like they looked so pale when I had the cardboard over it. I'm like, oh, I'm so sad. But I see zero change in any of the paints. Yay! <laughs> I really like these paints. They're easy to use. That's awesome. Okay, we'll cut those in half put one in the drawer and check in another six months. Number four was Sennelier. Here, let's put it yellow side up because that's what we're used to accept. 
I put them in the window. <laughs> Shoot. I put them in the window brown side up, which means this side is the side that was exposed to sunlight. Well, that's going to confuse things, but I'll keep it straight by the direction of the writing on the back. No change. Well, I would hope not. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we have three different sets of paint to make light fast test for. Now we will do that. That's going to take a while, but it'll be worth it. And then I will cut these up, put them right back in the window. Dang it. Dang it all. You should have been better because I really love you. You're so fun to use. So easy. Good thing I'm using it. Well, I'm not really in World Watercolor Month, but I have in the past used this mostly in... Sorry, my door is creaking. I have in the past used this mostly in sketchbooks, and I guess that's where it's going to have to stay. Hey, Mia, you disappoint me. I am starting out with a brand new set from last video, the Paul Rubin student grade paints. And these actually rewet pretty easily, but I did notice the lighter pigment load. At least that's what it felt like once they had dried up because most of them in this palette were dried up. I had to add a few colors here and there. And I think I got the greens wrong. Now that I, I'm gonna have to watch this video not speed it up because I think I did two sap greens and missed the olive green entirely. So we'll see. I'll go back and look at that and if so I'll stick it in this swatch sheet later. But yeah, these are Paul Rubin's student grade paints. Let's see how they do. Remember in that video I did say a few of them were a little hard to tell the light fast rating on. So this is moving to that gift I got from one of you guys. Has all those handmade, seven handmade paints on the top. Then we have Daniel Smith, Da Vinci, and Van Gogh paints as well. Just a gorgeous set of paints. I cannot wait to see how they do with light fast testing, especially the handmade ones. The Da Vinci Van Gogh will probably be not too surprised by those results, but I am curious about those and I cannot wait to paint more paintings with these paints. That'll be fun. Last but not least is the gouache that we got in the Smart Art Kit and it is the brand Savoir Faire. We also have two Stray gouaches. This is Windsor and Newton Naples Yellow, and this is Talon's Scarlet. So we will do all 22 of these and see what they look like in the window. I wanted to also do a painting with them, but I won't have time to do that for this round. So I'll have to catch it on the next round. All right, I'm going to just squeeze all these out and put them on our light fast sheets that way. When we finally do get around to painting with them, maybe we'll have some information on their light fastness. Well, I certainly found this interesting. <laughs> it's been a while since I did that original gouache painting with those, and it is different working with gouache. I've been watercolor and oil mostly just for the last, I don't know, months, several months. So I don't know what the difference is exactly. Maybe the paint is really dry on the paper, and so I am trying to figure out how much water to use on it without making it too watery. So there's, I guess, that little aspect to it. And then the Windsor and Newton, you can see on the palette, the bottom left, I squeezed out like a third of the tube of, I don't know, watery liquid. It's the binder, obviously, but it all went to the top of the tube and it took me forever. And I squeezed a lot of liquid into a paper towel in order to even get any of the paint out on <laughs> the palette. So that was frustrating, but however, when I used that Windsor & Newton paint on the swatch sheet, oh my gosh, did it feel so nice compared to the other paints. Even the Turner felt good compared to the Savoir Faire. So if I got gouache, I would probably want to try the Windsor & Newton. That's it, that's all, and Here's what's left of the gouache. There's quite a bit on here still actually because some of them just came out really fast. Anyway, kind of interesting to use that. It was different. I will take my paper cutter now, cut all these in half and put one half in the window and one half in the deep dark drawer. And then we will do an update in three to six months, maybe three months and six months, or maybe just six months. Who knows? But I still do want to do another painting with these. I've only done one and I would love to try them again. 
and these and these. I want to paint with everything on here, okay? <laughs> okay. So I don't think I've forgotten anything. If I did, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments, hopefully. And hopefully these light fast results for the Himimiya were interesting to you. And this was Rembrandt and Sennelier. Wow. Very cool. Very, very cool. My only regret is that I couldn't do a painting for you guys today, but no worries, that will come on Friday. So see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs> I am really hoping these hemo. Oh my god. <laughs>